Tuesday, we were talking about um, the diversity, compensation diversity and similarity indices. And uh, we talked about them just sort of in general terms. And then I kind of punted um, as far as sort of how we uh, calculate those. And, uh, and today we're gonna just go through that. Um, and uh, sorry, you gotta provide your own M&Ms today, um, but uh, here's a kind of just a, a quick example. And uh, we'll just work through this. It probably won't take uh, too, too terribly long here. But uh, so the first ones we want to look at are our uh, composition and diversity uh, measures. And, uh, and remember from, from our discussion on Tuesday that these are calculated for each site individually, right? So it's a, it's a sort of concept or a number that's going to describe what is happening within a site, OK? And uh, so I've got two, uh, two sort of, I don't know, ecosystems here, right? m and ecosystems. I've got a, a healthy functioning uh, m and ecosystem just as I poured it out of the bag. And then I have my overgrazed site, which is uh, sort of, you know, what a couple of bags of m ms look like after they sit on my desk for a while. And then I eat all of the colors that I really like and I leave the other ones there. So. Um, so we've got our, our healthy M&M uh, ecosystem and our overgrazed uh, system. And then we want to sort of describe what's happening with each of these in terms of their composition and diversity. OK, so so the first thing we need to do is tally up all of the, uh, the different colors of M&Ms. And uh, just to save time, I've already done that. Right. So uh, I'll go ahead and fill this in here. So. For site one, which is our healthy M&Ms, then there were uh, there were 10 reds, there were 22 orange, 10 yellow, 17 green, 22 blue, and 21 brown. Okay, and uh, uh, actually we'll just go ahead and work with that one first, right? So, so and then we need the the sum of these, right? So I'll just do that down here at the bottom. Um, of those. All right, so the total is 102 uh, M&Ms, okay? And so now we want to know, like, what is our, our percent composition uh, by abundance in this case, right? And so uh, composition is just really simply, like, of these 102, what percentage of them uh, comes from each of these different colors, right? And, and it's really straightforward. Uh, we're just going to uh, take the number of that color and divide it by the uh, total number for that site, right? Um, which is uh, B, and then I'm just going to use the dollar sign here uh, to fix that uh, row at, at number 10, right? Okay. And then, uh, so here I've got my... Uh, my result, and then I can go ahead and drag that on down to the other colors uh, because I use that dollar sign to fix the uh, the row. It's not going to change the row on me. Okay, and uh, so now that I've got those, we could go ahead and format that as a percentage. Let's add a decimal point on there. Okay, so about 10% of our M&Ms were red. Uh, almost 22% were orange, 10% were yellow, 17% were green, 22 blue, and about 21% were brown. Okay, so that's our composition. So of the 102 M&Ms that we have, this is sort of the, the breakdown by, the percentage breakdown by color. Okay, so that's what composition is. And composition, remember, is defined in reference to some sort of other indicator, right? So this is composition by abundance. We could we could go through the sort of exercise again of calculating the cover of each of these M&Ms and then do composition by cover, or we could take a, a weight on each of these and, uh, and, and tally it up and we could do composition by biomass or, or weight, right? Um, it would all be the same. Uh, those would actually, uh, with M&Ms, right? Because they're all the same size and the same weight, uh, right, that um, that we would end up with the same uh, percentages if we do it by abundance or cover or biomass, right? So 
so that's one nice property about M and M's. But in the in the real world, that's not gonna uh, it's not gonna shake out that way. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So let's do our our uh, overgrazed M and M's. And so in this case, there were there were six red ones. There were forty four orange ones. Sixteen yellow. Seven green. Twelve blue and 26 brown ones, okay? And uh, that gives us a, a 111 M&Ms total, okay? I combined two packages together and then like ate half of them, right? Um, it's uh, the sacrifices that I make for, uh, for education, right? So, okay, and then uh, here um, we can just do the same thing. We're going to divide the number by um, by the, the total for the uh, for the site, right? Drag that down, and then we'll format those as percentages too. Okay, okay. So so this is cool, right? So look, our composition of red M and M's changed, right? It went down. Okay, our uh, orange M and M composition went up quite a bit, right? We're almost uh, double the the sort of uh, composition of orange M and M's. Yellow went up a little bit. Uh, green went down a lot, right? Blue went down a ton, and then brown was yeah, relatively unchanged. There were a few more brown ones, but not not that many. Okay, so that's composition. Uh, and again, composition is just a relative look at like what the sort of different members of that uh, ecosystem are. All right, so let's look at the diversity indices. Now with, with diversity, right, our goal is to not have individual numbers for like each of these colors. Our goal is to get a single number that describes the diversity within uh, each of our ecosystems here, each of our sites, okay? So we'll do Shannon Wiener uh, index first. And, and here's the formula for it, right? And that looks really kind of ugly or really hairy but if we break it apart and do it sort of step at a time, then it's actually pretty straightforward, okay? So in this case, we've got two, uh, two things that we really need to know. So we've got N sub I, which is the number of individuals, uh, in our case, number of individuals for each color or for a color is N sub I. And then we have capital N, which is the total number uh, of M and M's, okay? And so if we do site one, then for the red M&Ms, our N sub I is 10, right? So it's this guy right here. And then I'm gonna divide that by our total here, okay? So B dollar sign 10, because I wanna fix that, because I need to keep that from sort of moving around on me <clears throat> as I do the other sums, okay? So uh, I'll go ahead and hit enter. So there's our value, and then I'll go ahead and drag that down to populate that. Okay, so here's our first term, uh, n sub i divided by n, done for all the colors. And then I'm going to take the natural log of that number that I just calculated, and the function for natural log is just ln, uh, and it's that number right there. Okay. All right. Uh, remember, when you're dealing with log, uh, you know, log sort of math, right? Um, the log of a number less than one is going to be negative. Okay, so so that's that's cool. That's what we expect. Uh, we'll go ahead and drag that down. Okay, and then the formula says I need to multiply those two numbers together. So here's um, my first term times my log term. Okay. And I'll drag that down. OK, now I've, I've constructed this sort of inside portion for each color. OK, and then this uh, summation symbol here just means I need to sum it across or over all of the colors. And so I and then don't forget this out here at the end, right? The negative sign. The whole reason that negative sign is there is because the log of a number less than one is negative. And so all this negative sign is going to do here is just make the answer positive at the end. Okay. So when I come here, I'm going to do uh, equals, um, do negative one 
times the sum of all of these guys here. Okay, so you see that up here at the top, negative one times the sum of those. And that gives me a value of 1.74 for my Shannon Wiener index. All right. Again, you know, when you have these summations and stuff, um, it, you know, it, it, the best way to approach these is to just split it out and do it piece at a time uh, in Excel. It really helps you kind of figure out the logic of what that, that sort of calculation is actually doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and do site two here, right? So we've got uh, uh, our uh, N sub I here is for red is six uh, divided by C10. Okay, and I'll do the natural log of that. And I'm gonna multiply those two together, okay? And then I've got all three of these things now, and then I can just go ahead and drag these all the way down just do everything in one fell swoop. And then I will do negative one times the sum of all of those. Okay, so there you go, 1.56-ish, right? Let's get rid of a couple decimal places here, make that these easier to look at. All right, good. So let's interpret these then. So 1.74, compared to 1.56, right? So that is suggesting that uh, site one is more diverse than site two, right? Now remember the Shannon Wiener index is more heavily influenced by the species richness. So the, the total number of, of species in this case or colors of M&Ms didn't change, right? We still have the same, we still have six colors of, of M&Ms, okay? Uh, but we have, uh, um, you know, a lot sort of uh, fewer of some colors in this overgrazed system. Okay, so the diversity is lower, but it's not a ton lower. And the reason it's not a ton lower is because we still have all of our colors represented. All right. Okay. So that's Shannon Wiener index, pretty straightforward. Um, let's do the Simpsons index now. Um, and, you know, it's the same sort of two pieces of information that we need. We need the number of individuals per color and we need the total number uh, of M&Ms that, uh, that we have, okay? So for red, um, just looking at our formula here, we need the number of red M&Ms times the number of red M&Ms minus one, all right? Whoops, didn't like that. Oh, I forgot my multiplication sign in there. There we go, okay? And then for our second term, uh, we need the uh, total number of M&Ms. Um, so again, I'm gonna use the dollar sign here, B10 times B10 uh, minus one, okay? Okay, and then so down here, we just did the sort of numerator um, of this term and we did the denominator of it, okay? And then we're gonna do the quotient here, which is just going to be the uh, 90 divided by 10,302, all right? Which gives us a fairly small number there, okay? And let's grab these and we will drag these all the way down, all right? And then for our Simpsons, then we just sum those up, okay? There you go, 0.1743, all right. And now uh, let's do the same thing for site two. Um, so what do we got here? There's uh, C4 times uh, C4 minus one. And this is going to be C10 times C10 minus one. And a portion of those. All right, and drag those down. Bingo, there we go. All right, now, so this is, this is interesting, right? So remember, Simpson's index is a measure of dominance, okay? And so to get diversity from that, uh, we could do, uh, uh, we, we could calculate one minus D, right? 
and so we could do one minus that guy um, and one minus that guy and then that gives us sort of numbers um, that are sort of like on sort of like like go in the same direction as our Shannon Wiener numbers okay so so in terms of dominance site two has more dominance right because it's it's more dominated by our orange and our yellow and our brown M&Ms compared to um, our first site, which has a more even distribution of the of the colors, okay, or more equal distribution of the colors. Okay, uh, if we do sort of one minus that, then that would show us then that that um, site one has the higher diversity value than site two uh, does as well. Okay, so same thing we're seeing with our Shannon Wiener index. Um, except with the, the Simpsons index, again, that's the, the, the index itself is a measure of dominance. Um, one minus that is the sort of measure of diversity, okay? But it is a lot more influenced by the evenness sort of portion of diversity, whereas Shannon Wiener is more influenced by the richness portion uh, of the diversity, all right? So, uh, I'll, I guess I'll ask uh, Julian. You're 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 our only person on Zoom uh, live right now, so um, you know just go ahead and, uh, and and raise your hand or put a comment out there if you have any any questions. Um, otherwise, uh, we'll go on. I'm going to make sure that this is saved here, and uh, so this is diversity. Um, remember, diversity is like what is happening within each of these plates, right? Or within each of our sites, all right? And then we compare sites by just looking at the values, uh, the difference in the values, okay? But you can't say that, oh, this, uh, you know, this site has 25% more diversity than the others just because your Shannon Wiener index happens to be 25% greater than, than the other one, okay? That's not how those, that's not how those work. Um, you can say this one has more diversity than the other, but they're not on a, on a linear scale. Okay. If we need to do uh, like an actual comparison, then we can use uh, a, a similarity measure. And, and uh, whereas diversity and composition metrics describe what's happening with insights, similarity measures compare what's happening between two sites. Okay, so they're pairwise comparisons. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill in our, um, our, our color values here. Okay, so those are our uh, uh, colors of, of each of our um, the different M&Ms in, in each of the sites, okay? And, uh, and we did our composition, uh, same as last time, all right. Um, oops, like we should do our sum first here. Okay. And our composition is just that divided by Oh, I put the dollar sign in the wrong place. The dollar sign. Yeah. There we go. Always check your work. I guess that's the moral of the story, right? That's not right either. B O, oh, because this sheet's different. It should be B eleven. Don't go too fast and get ahead of yourself. That's the other moral of the story here. All right, so uh, let's switch those into percentages. There we go. All right, so this is the same as what we calculated on the diversity sheet. But now we're gonna look at, at similarity. And, and so similarity ultimately is going to give us one number that describes how close or how similar these two sites are to each other, okay? And the one that causes the most confusion is this Chekhanowski or this, this Bray-Curtis similarity um, index here. 
And it's because of this kind of funky min function, right? And, and I'll just kind of explain how that works. So what we need to do for, remember we're summing, uh, in this case, right, it says I equals one to M. And that's basically just, we're gonna sum over all of our colors, all right? So we need to do this here for each color separately. All right, and, and this function min uh, x, y, x, i, y, i, that's just saying like, what's the smallest of these two values? Okay, so for red, it's six. For orange, it's 22. For yellow, it's 10, right? And for green, it's seven. And so it, you know, it'll vary depending on like whether the minimum comes from site one or site two, but we just need to know what the smallest number uh, is. And it's really pretty straightforward. In Excel, there's a function, um, we can just do equals min and then give it our two numbers. And there you go. It's all it's auto magically figured out uh, what the smallest number is. And if we replicate that over all of them, then, okay, it, it's grabbed the smallest one sort of no matter where it came from, all right? And then next step, we can sum these minimums up. Like so. All right. And then, so that gives us this term right here, what everything that's happening in the sum. Okay. These guys at the bottom, these look sort of like funky, right? But all that is, is just saying, what's the total number of uh, M&Ms from site one and the total number of M&Ms from site two. Okay. That's, that's pretty much it. We already have those numbers. They're right here. All right. So we've got everything we need now to calculate our similarity value. And, uh, and so we can say equals, and then we need, don't forget the two here from the function. So two times our sum of the minimums divided by the sum of the site one M&Ms plus the sum of the site two M&Ms, all right? And that's it. Okay, so 0.732. Now, remember the, the sort of nice thing or one of the, the, the sort of like cool features of the Chekhanowski or Bray Curtis similarity measure is we can interpret it as a percentage, okay? And so I can just kind of like click the button, maybe add a decimal place here and say, okay, well, according to this measure, site one and site two are 73 percent similar okay and that is just you know sort of in terms of like the number of species and also the uh the sort of like like composition of each of those species okay if i uh you know sort of drop the species all together say i changed say I ate all of the red m ms right because like you know just something about today like i'm all about red m ms okay so we have no red m ms Okay, then change that to zero. Look what happens to my similarity, right? It's dropping because I lost an entire species, right, of, of M&Ms, okay? Same thing if I drop my blue M&Ms, they go way down, all right? And so this will keep going until you had, you know, like, like zero, right, it would be the, the lower number, which would mean that there is no similarity between these sites, okay? And that could be that, like, you had no species in common between them, or site one had species and then site two was like a complete wasteland, right? Okay, so the, 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 the Chekhanowski, or like I said, it's uh, often called Bray-Curtis uh, uh, similarity or Bray-Curtis distance is really nice because we can interpret it in, in terms of percent similarity, right? Um, now the squared Euclidean distance is just another similarity measure and it's, um, what we're doing here is just sort of like plotting the distance between site one and site two in like multi-dimensional space, right? And I love thinking about like six-dimensional M and M space, which is sort of a like a bit to get your head around. But like, say we only had three colors. Say we had red, orange, and yellow. Okay, and we could take the the sort of number of M and Ms in red, orange, and yellow, and then on a three-dimensional graph if you know, red was X and orange was Y and yellow was Z, then we can actually like plot the position of site one 
in terms of its abundance of red, orange, and yellow M&Ms. And we can do that for site two as well. Okay. And then uh, what the squared Euclidean distance is doing is just like measuring the straight line distance between each of those two colors. Okay. Or each, sorry, each of those two sites based off of their colors. Um, and, you know, with this, you know, we can only visualize like three dimensions, right? But we can do it in, in terms of like however many dimensions we have. In this case, we've got six, right? We've got six different colors. And so we're just going to sort of calculate what that straight line distance is. And so all for, for squared Euclidean distance, right? So what we need to do is just for each of the colors, get the squared difference between each one. Okay, so for red, it's, it's uh, 10, whoops. It's gonna be 10 minus six, right? And then I'm gonna do the caret sign for an exponent and then two to square it. All right, so this is the notation for raising something to, to the second power. All right, and the, the, the sort of number is, or the, the sort of squared uh, difference here is 16. Um, and uh, we're, the reason we're squaring it actually is um, so that the number is always positive. Okay, and so it, it wouldn't matter if you did 10 minus 6 or 6 minus 10, right? Once you square it, you're going to end up with the same number, right? Um, so don't worry about the order in which you do them. Um, we're going to do that for all of the colors here, okay? That gives us our, our sort of squared term in here. And now we need to sum those up. All right. And then the last thing we need to do is just take the square root of that, which actually just like gets it back into, uh, to, you know, M and M numbers and not squared M and M numbers. Okay. So square root of that. Okay. There you go. 27.5 nine, right, or five, yeah, there we go, 27.59 M&Ms apart, right? Um, now, the squared Euclidean distances work really great, right? They're fine. Um, however, it's a little hard to interpret that, and it only becomes really useful if we have, like, a bunch of other comparisons to make, okay? So if you, if we had, like, five sites and we wanted to compare all of those five sites to our healthy m, &M ecosystem, right? Then we could do squared Euclidean distance and then we'd see the ones that were most similar to our healthy m, &M ecosystem would have the smallest squared Euclidean distance. Okay, but, but like just on its own, like just doing like a single comparison like this, that number doesn't really mean a lot, right? Because we don't, we don't really have any way of like saying, is that, a, is that big or is that little? Whereas the, the sort of Chekhanowski similarity index, because we can interpret it as a percent, then it, it sort of stands on its own a little bit better. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I think the range community tends to favor these. NRCS uses uh, these similarity coefficient values a lot. Uh, honestly, not a lot of people actually call it Chekhanowski's. Most people will just call it like a similarity index, um, but but that's sort of the the sort of nuts and bolts of what's happening. So, okay, so so that's it. I think these should be all of the calculations that uh, we'll need for the the composition, diversity, and similarity um, assignment that we're that we're doing. Uh, we're just going to be doing them like with real species and not in, you know, candy land here. So. Um.